Welcome to my Windows 10 SSD. Basically, you know the article on articlelinux.com. I have a bay, and in this bay, I have a tray, and I can pop out an SSD and put Linux in there, put Windows in there, and I can just switch via an SSD. So this tutorial is going to be all about Windows 10, VirtualBox, and Arco Linux. Some time ago, and that was, I think, more like 1st of January 2019, we had this new virtual box on Linux. And, of course, uh, Windows is following along. And you see here, January 28th, VirtualBox 6.0.4 released. So, at some point in time, they released the 6th version. And here we see also December 18th release. Don't know when Windows was released, but basically let's have a look we click this big button and if you click on the big button you have to choose if you have windows mac linux or solaris i've chosen already for windows and it's already downloaded it's waiting for me here and i went to the articlelinux.info website to download to download came to this website sourceforge chose my article linux version 19.1.4 let me point out in this video as well. So if you're not downloading fast, then you choose another of these guys because now I'm downloading from Canterbury, but I could download from Germany, I could download from Montreal, New York, etc. So the speed depends also about uh, from the distance. How far are you away from the source? So if you if this is not fast enough for you, you can say, okay, forget about this. I'm gonna stop this, get rid of this. And then say, for instance, let's go for London. I want to try that. So London, how fast is London? This guy came from also from England, I believe. So the speed was 30.25 megabytes per second. So it's pretty fast. So happy about that. So SourceForge can be fast, can be uh, working good. I don't know if he actually does something here now. Let's ask him to kick it back. I have already the ISO, but just for educational sake, let's see if he's going to download anything or not. Ah, finally. So that's the speed. What do we get? One, and then it's going to climb up. Less, more, less. And you decide if you want to change the server. That is a little bit slow. Strange how these things happen. This is my download a few minutes ago. This is my download now from a totally different server. So get rid of it, stop it, get rid of it, and choose another server. That's the point. Auto select, it gives me Czechoslovakia or something. Very strange. Miles away from here. Last time I chose Colonia, I believe. Or was it University of Kent? One of those I've always take and you find out easily enough which one is, is working for you all right last thing because i want to continue guys i want to go to virtualbox this is just downloading right speed is super three uh, 37 point etc so this is in less than 43 even so it's very very fast so choose your server wisely and remember it let him download his thing, doesn't matter. But let's also go to our downloads. So we have the virtual box already here. It's an executable, that's what it means, exe. And if you don't see that thing back there, you say this, this of course, everything is here in Dutch, but it's this little button you have to press in any uh, system here, whether it's Finnish or, or German or whatever, French, it's that little thing. Let's start it up and let's install and test out let's see if there's something else here normally we don't do anything here create start menu entry yes shortcut to the desktop no i like a clean desktop create a shortcut and a quick launch long walk yeah okay and that's okay next yes yes and let's install oracle vm virtual box 6.0.4 this may take several minutes i 
and start. That was not several minutes. So we have two ISOs, they're both the same. The which guy was the fastest is 4.3 here, 43. So I better download from I don't know what I chose and again here, mirror net, net you can see it in the text, net colonia. For me, that's the fastest server. 43.21 megabytes per second. That's just awesome. Fine. Then we get this general thing here. Uh, let's kill this guy, remove. I guess I have still have some leftovers, delete all files from a previous installation, delete all files. Let's assume everything is new. We have here a button like in Arco Linux, I mean in VirtualBox and Linux, uh, in Arco Linux, we have the same kind of uh, view or, or uh, GUI graphic user interface with the same look. And you see me do the same things. There is a template I'm going to make. It's not going to be Microsoft Windows, it's going to be Linux. And then you can't or can decide to put Arch Linux in there already. And then next. Memory is the same hardware, so I use the same settings that I use in Linux. It is the same computer, other bay, other SSD. That's it. Well, same bay, other SSD. So more or less middle, it's okay. Plenty of memory here. And I normally use 25 these days. Okay, create. That's that. Right mouse click, go to the settings. Tell him more. And then you can go and select these guys. Maybe it works, maybe it will not. Just click it and you'll see. Um, staying of all these things, it's good advice. Processor, I have eight, so I'm gonna move it to four. This one is for INSEE and all that. When checked, physical address extension feature of the host CPU will be exposed to the virtual machine. So yeah, I would like to know my processor name and etc. So Inksy can read it. Acceleration, that's okay. Display, more or less in the middle. And this guy is an important guy. So in Linux, in Arco Linux, we have made videos about it that you need to set it to VBOX VGA not sure if it will apply to windows so try i've been reading about this, this is actually more an experimental kind of um, uh, setting so i'm gonna leave this out for now so i can always come back and click it and see what happens not necessary and not necessary and all the rest is okay so i have my template i'm gonna clone it i'm gonna call it Arco Linux or anything you want to start now. Ideal for distro hoppers, just copy paste, put in Ubuntu, put in Linux Mint, put in whatever you want as ISO. We have here a setting that's exactly the same as the other one. That's what you mean by, by uh, cloning, right? So once it's set correctly, then you have something already. And the only thing you need to do is put in a download somewhere download this guy in here and then we are going to boot it up making it big enough nice logo and there we go we can go to full screen host f this is a little thing is my screen costify it's a little extension you can put in google chrome browser and it's going to record everything I do including the audio Hi welcome Hola. this is not started start the video here on the other screen and there we go. So the settings are correct. We have a maximalized screen, 1080, no, not 1920 by 1080. 
And well, it's for the rest, it's like you always install Arch Linux and it finds the Geo EIP. So this, this, this line here, let's read this. Okay, and version difference 6.00 and 6.04. We know that it was made a month ago. So, of course. So we have here Brussels, that's correct. And then you go for next. You don't install anything live. I have heard somebody doing that. Of course, there's nothing to be installed live. You need to install the ISO, reboot, and then do the updates. So Belgium is my keyboard. You know that by now that I need my Azerti. We're going to erase the disk and let him do this thing. Maybe you've seen the post. There will be updates in Calamares, so where we can select more settings for the swap. So be patient. It will come to us if we're patient. Now we're going to tell, this is our Linux. Choose a password. You want to log in automatically. This can be done because we're at XFCE. Or and you can use the same password for the administrator account or not. That's entirely up to you. Next, install, and we're installing. So everything went exactly the same, basically, as on the Arch Linux installation. If you have VirtualBox 6.0 there, I don't think I've changed any of my settings. Exactly the same. And everything becomes full screen then. So that's a good thing. Control T. This is 19.01.4, so January release. And let's wait for the video here. Okay, we're nearly there. The unsquashing is, of course, a long process. It's two gigabytes that needs to uncompress. It's unzipping that it does. And then it's up to us. Then we restart our systems, our machines. And what you can do, what you need to do, what you is interesting to do, that is getting rid of that. So power off is maybe a better choice. Go in here and say, forget about this ISO. Don't boot from it. Just start from the hard disk. And that's basically what we're telling him now to do. Forget about the hard disk, uh, sorry, about the ISO, and just go to the grub. And grub is your way to install your, well, to start your um, system. And we're off. Our Linux is booted. We've uh, done an auto connect, so an auto um, login, which means we're just in XFCE. And of course, all the others exist as well. Arch Linux exists of XFCE, open box, right? And it has also i3. And the idea is to learn more and more about these different kind of, um, well, ways to, to work. It has every, every desktop has a particular workflow to it. This is very much keyboard driven, and we do try to help you out in the beginning with all the keyboards shortcuts down here, but there are much, much more keyboard shortcuts. Ctrl Alt V is really going to run something. Ctrl Alt F is going to run something. So everything kicks in after a keyboard shortcut. So it's up to you to learn those. And there's lots of tutorials on articlenext.com. So basically, we have uh, a system installed in VirtualBox. We can work with it, but it's not any, no operating system is intended to be installed solely forever and ever in a virtual box. That's not really the idea. The best thing to do is install it on a laptop desktop. So real metal. And the best, very best thing is with SSDs, not a hard disk, but an SSD is much, much faster. And it will give your, um, old computer, for instance, a new life, a new speed, because you'll see that it's going to improve the loading speed enormously, hard disk or SSD. Let's um, 
stop the video here and there are 20 10 available updates and let's continue with a update video which is always interesting always something comes up to teach you guys all right this concludes installing Arch Linux in VirtualBox on Windows 10.